Hello, my name is Michaela McGregor, and if you are new to my channel, I make a lot of academic content, but today I want to talk about something a little bit different, and that is writing a query to a literary agent. Just for a little bit of background context, I worked this last summer from May till September as a summer intern for Harvey Klinger Literary Agency, and essentially I reviewed unsolicited submissions to the literary agent that I worked for. I reviewed them for like potential agent representation. If um, they were going to be rejected, I would respond to them, or I would ask them to send their submission if they didn't attach their uh, sample pages. If I thought there was like potential in it, I would put it in a folder for my supervisor to review. Yeah, each week I probably reviewed over a hundred queries, so I saw a lot of different pieces and I, as I was going throughout the summer, I wrote down a bunch of do's and don'ts so that if you are submitting a query, whether that's a nonfiction or a fiction manuscript, hopefully if you follow these guidelines it'll help you to um, have a better chance at least at making it past the first round. I don't know from there, I never worked at anything past the first round of submissions, I was just like working through the slog pile, but this might at least give you a leg up there. I don't know. Yeah, so these really have no general categories except for do and don't. As I thought of these, I just like typed them into my notes um, throughout the summer. Oh, number one, do not send an email in the structure that is not requested by the agent. So if the agent has on their website to please send the sample writing, pasted it into the email, don't send it as an attachment. I probably had like five to 10% of queries that I received. They were attachments and they weren't supposed to be attachments. They're supposed to be pasted into the body of the email, which was just really tedious for me because then I had to like download this PDF and, um, then switch between tabs. I mean, like, that doesn't sound that inconvenient, like, it's a minor inconvenience, but just, um, follow the submission format that's put on the website. Don't mention that you've been rejected before. Now, if you've applied to that agent, that specific agent in the past, and you're querying them again for either a revised manuscript or a new manuscript, then it's okay to mention that you've been rejected by that specific agent before. But if you're just querying a new agent that you've never contacted before, and your manuscript has already been rejected by several people, you don't need to say that. Like, some people would tell me that and I just was kind of sitting there like, okay, good. Like now I know that other people have dismissed this project. It, it kind of just, it gives me this predisposition to think there's going to be something about it that's rejectable. Um, unless requested for your bio, don't speak about yourself in the third person. Typically I think for the query, it's best to just keep it first person, um, more conversational. For the queries I received, I thought they were more personal if they were written in the first person because it wasn't requested to do it in the third person. This one's more of just writing in general. A lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot, like maybe half of the queries I received, the manuscripts had prologues, um, like especially the young adult fiction had prologues. Most of the time I felt like it wasn't even necessary. I think that writers want to include a prologue when they go and make their manuscript. If it's not significantly powerful for your story, I wouldn't include it because for me, it almost seemed a sign, like when I opened up this sample and it started off with a prologue and that prologue was lackluster, my immediate thought was like, okay, this, this, like it just wasn't adding to it and if the author didn't recognize it, it wasn't adding to it, it just kind of lowered my opinion of it even more, I guess. Don't put the first names as the chapter titles unless like you do a multi-perspective story, like a Rick Riordan sort of thing. So many of the queries, it would say like chapter one. Alex. And I just, I just got so sick of that format. It just seemed very not creative after a while. When explaining the genre in your query, don't say middle grade slash YA. For me, I often evaluate, like, I need to know what the genre is when I'm evaluating it. Like, is this appropriate? Is this good material for middle grade, like a younger kid? And if it's middle grade slash YA, that just seems to me like the author wasn't able to choose a genre or they weren't able to write specifically enough for one age group. So they're just kind of labeling it as both. Don't add anything that isn't requested. If the agent wants five, pages, don't send eight pages. So many people will be like, well, the first chapter was 10 pages, so I just decided to send the rest anyway. Don't do that. It's a, just, that's a big no-no. <laughs> okay, when describing your book and your query, don't use excerpts of your story to describe it. For example, let's say you're pitching it and you say, Elaine's world changes when she woke up and saw that the sky was green. And then like, if I go down to the sample and then the very first sentence of your actual manuscript is, Elaine woke up and saw that the sky was green. To me, that's just like, you're just literally copying and pasting. Don't tell me things that don't matter. If you are a famous lawyer and you're writing a book that's about law or set in a legal setting, then definitely tell me that. But if you're like a really cool lawyer and you have all these accolades and you're writing like a science fiction, you don't need to tell me all about your law stuff. You can mention it in your bio, just keep it concise. You don't have to like have a whole paragraph about one thing that's irrelevant to your manuscript. Also, don't send cover. A lot of people would send cover 
cover art of their story that they've either made or a friend made them. To me, that was just like jumping the gun. Like you haven't made it past the first round yet and it's just wasting space in the email because then I'm like kind of scrolling through cover art. Don't include that in your very first query. And then finally, on that same note as the cover art, don't mention that you can see it being turned into a movie or a television series. So many people at the end of their query would say something like, I think that this has potential to be turned into a movie or a television series. Unless you're actually writing like a screenplay or something that's designed for the television, don't say that. That's just so, like that is so far in the future and so not handy to the intern who's going to just read your manuscript. Okay, moving on to the do's. Um, definitely do these things if you are submitting a query to a literary agent. Mention any writing accomplishments you have. If you have a lot, you don't have to like list every single one, but like if you've been published in a journal or if you've been head of a writing committee, anything like that, feel free to mention it. It shows that you have prowess when it comes to linguistics. And I think that it just says something about your ambition to write too. This one I kind of covered in the don'ts, so. As a do, please read the instructions thoroughly multiple times. There might be something that you missed. Go back to the literary agent's website and just every single part of it. Make sure it's formatted perfectly. If you can get someone notorious to read your manuscript and give it like a good job or to even write a forward to your story, go ahead and do that. It really says something if a famous author or just a published author in general has read your work and give, given it a stamp of approval. And then also when starting off your query, always put the basics at the top. It's okay if you actually put a pitch as your first sentence, like, um, you know, like imagine a world where this, this is A, B, C, and D. That's okay to start, but just in general, try to keep the basics at least towards the top, if not at the very top. And when I say basics, I mean the word count, genre, title, which by the way, also here's another do. Put your title in all capital letters. It makes it stand out. It's easier when I'm responding to the submission, when I'm like writing in the title, I can find it easier. Some people don't even put their titles anywhere in the query. So I'm like searching the whole thing, wasting my time, like literally browsing the whole thing so I can say, hi, I'm so sorry about your manuscript, blah, blah, blah. But like, they just don't even tell me the title. <laughs> so put your title in and capitalize it. And basics at the top. Tell me about what themes your book explores. Does it go into the politics of the Middle East? Does it go into um, the differences between uh, Democratic and Republican views in the United States environmental policy? I don't know. Whatever your themes explore, and those are both political examples, it can be anything at all, but if it shows that there's depth to your story, I want to know about it as someone who's reading to evaluate your submission for whether it has good content. Mention what books are similar to yours, and a lot of people were actually very good about doing this. You could say something like, this book draws from the same genre of horror as Stephen King's Carrie, but at the same time inserts much of the light-hearted banter present in Jane Austen's novels. I don't know, something like that. Um, just to kind of give an idea of what the tone is of your story, that's always kind of good. Okay, if you're doing a fantasy, and a lot of people do fantasies, so this is applicable to so many people, please go slowly. I cannot tell you how many queries I've read for fantasy stories. There's so many. I think that if you're a writer of fantasy, you become very familiar with your own world. All the words that you've made up, the setting that you've made up, it's all made up. But if you're just pitching in one page, your fantasy world to someone else who's never even heard of it before, I think it's easy to make it overly complex and make it confusing. Like, I have no idea of what your world system is. Pretend you're explaining it to a kindergartner. Um, just because people who are reviewing your queries do move quickly and it's easier if they can quickly understand rather than knowing the complexities of your world. There's no need for me to understand every single part of it. Um, just kind of get your point across um, and don't bog down your query with unnecessary information that's only gonna confuse the reader. Sign off with the name that you want to be addressed by. This happened so many times. People wouldn't sign off at all. So I don't even know what their name is. I have to like try to decipher from their email address what their name is when I'm responding. Or sometimes they would have a name in their email address, like their wife's name or whatever, and then they'd sign off with a different name. So I'm like, why is why does your email not match your ending name? Just make it clear who you are. <laughs> Do a normal font, normal size. I think that's kind of a given. Be creative when you name your title, like when you title your book, please be creative because, you know, reading a lot of submissions, a lot of them started to blur together, especially those that were called like the mortal sword or like the emerald epic of princesses and crowns. I think that a lot of fantasy genres tend to kind of go for those names. Just try to be creative because it really helps you to just stand out even like seeing all the headers of unopened emails if you have a really snappy title. Your subject line matters so much. This is going to sound very judgmental, but I will tell you that a lot of the time I could very well predict which direction a query was going to go in, like good or bad, 
based on the subject line because people who didn't put much effort into their manuscript, their subject line would reflect that. It would be like all lowercase, they wouldn't have the title in the subject line, it would be sometimes even no subject at all. And then people who had a really nice query, like query, colon, and then their title in all capital letters they tended to be better writers. So make a good impression and have a really good subject line for your email. Try to do a normal word count. Um, I know that's kind of a tall order because like you might have already written your manuscript and it might be wildly off the charts. I only say this because if you are an unpublished author in particular, if I receive a query and someone says that their book is 300,000 words long, that's very difficult like to convince me that it's going to be good and on that same note unless you like specifically say that you want it to be like a short story or something sending me a query and saying that it's only forty thousand words that's very that's on the short side and then i question how you're able to tell the story that you've pitched to me in the span of forty thousand words keep your bio quick one paragraph you don't need any more than that you don't need to talk about yourself more than that talk more about the book than you talk about yourself and then finally this one i learned during a zoom call with my supervisor and this one kind of surprised me at first but it does make sense this is particularly relevant to non-fiction writers, although of course it's also a good idea to do this if you are a fiction writer. Mention your promotional platform. So sometimes I would show something to my supervisor and she would say like it's a really good non-fiction idea but it's tough because sometimes you know one author might have a much better promotional platform than another and that's just a huge factor in the decision of what to you know request additional material from. By this I mean like if you can show the literary agent that you're querying that you have a way to market your book, you have you know, a platform online, a presence in the media, whether that's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. If you can have a way to spread the word about your book, that makes a huge difference. Um, literary agents, their goal is to sell to a publisher your novel and for the publisher to then sell your book. The goal is to sell. And if you don't have really a way that you can sell your book, as if you're an unpublished author, and it's very important to mention your promotional platform. Um, so go ahead and do that if you have one. Okay, this is it. This is the whole list that I made. I have loved this internship. Like now that I'm reviewing these, I'm just like thinking about how much fun I had doing this, but I hope that it's been useful and good luck with your querying and your manuscript writing, whatever stage you're at in the process of publishing your book. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content and have a great rest of your week.